In unit seven, we'll talk about compression methods. So this is a, an entirely different topic. It's um, a little more uh, a static um, point of view. We'll uh, talk about why, what compression is and where it, uh, where it arises. And then we'll go through quite a list of different uh, compression techniques. All of them are fairly interesting. Um, again, I think this unit, together with uh, the last one, uh, are my favorite ones. Uh, the last one was maybe the one with the most intricate and, and niftiest algorithms. This one is, again, a unit that brings you to the forefront of the best method that we currently have for compressing text. And that's um, all very elegant uh, methods and algorithms. So I, I really like this unit, too. We'll talk about simple character encodings and then a whole list of different encoding methods. And you'll, you'll see what they're good for. In the last three units, we were basically looking at strings and how to find strings in longer strings, find uh, patterns in texts, the string matching problem. And we could generalize this a little bit um, in, in different ways, exact, uh, especially for the, for the suffix trees, where we found a whole bunch of, of problems that could be solved like this. Uh, in this and the next unit, we'll take a different perspective. We don't uh, compute with strings, but we want to store them or transmit them through a communication channel. And there's, there's different challenges that come with this. Um, the storage in a computer is always binary. So if we were talking about alphabets in the last chapter, at some point, we have to map all those alphabets to binary uh, bit strings. And that's one thing we will discuss in, in this unit. And while we're at it, there's different ways to encode things as bit strings, and there's better ways or worse ways. And especially how about uh, how to save space will be the, the concern of the unit seven. And then uh, the next unit will briefly look at how you can encode things robustly so that even if your channel sometimes uh, flips a bit, corrupts your message a tiny bit, you can still recover the text without retransmitting it. But forget about this uh, for this unit. Today, uh, we will talk about how to store a text so that uh, if the medium is perfect, if your hard disk doesn't have failures, you could reconstruct the text, but you, uh, it uses much less space. That's what zip is for. That's what all those different compression uh, programs are for that you use probably all the time. And you'll, after this unit, will understand how they work. A little bit of terminology that I'll use in, in this unit. We will talk about a source text. That's a string over some alphabet, well, sigma s. That's the thing we start with. It could be a file, or it could be a lot of different things. That will be what we want to store. What we actually store is not the text itself, not the source text, but the coded text. That's denoted by z. And it, be, it will be, in general, over a different alphabet. Our uh, attention will mostly be on binary alphabets. That's what we can directly store on computer memory, on disk, and whatever. Uh, so there will be a mapping from S to C. That's the encoding. So go from S to C. And we also want to go the other way back. If we have the coded text, we want to get back the source text. That's the decoding phase. That's a little bit of terminology that we'll use here. Now, in this, in this regime, you can think about many different encoding schemes. So an encoding scheme is simply an encoder algorithm and a decoder algorithm, maybe together with some rules how the coded text is formed. And it can have different goals. Uh, it can be about doing the encoding and decoding efficiently, or it can be, be resilient to noise or mistakes in the transmission. It could also be about security that you cannot figure out easily from the coded text what the source text was unless you have the specific decoding device 
usually together with some encryption key. This is also a whole area, but we won't, we won't really touch on this in this unit, in this module. Uh, integrity is related to security in the sense that you can detect if someone tampered with your data. This is done through, this is done through encryption, the security aspect, the integrity aspect is done through signatures. So you can detect that someone changed the message. That's uh, in a sense orthogonal to security. We'll not hear, we won't talk about any of this uh, in this class. And then finally, the size of the coded text is another goal and that will be the focus in our unit. So the size of the coded text written as C, that's the number of characters that we need to write down this coded text. So compression means finding a way to write a long source text with less memory. That's all what it is. So uh, we need a measure to say how good we encoded things. And here's a, a little catch. You have to take into account how big the alphabet is. Otherwise, you're not making a, a fair comparison. So what, what you usually do is you take the log of the size of the algorithm of the, of the alphabet, sorry. The logarithm of the size of the alphabet gives you the number of bits you would need to specify one character in this alphabet. So the compression ratio is just the total length of the coded text divided by the total length of the source text defined in this way. And if the uh, alphabet is binary, then the log of that is just one, so it goes away. Now this uh, compression ratio, it can be one. That means the two are essentially of the same, the same size. It can be less than one. Then we have actually compressed the source text. The coded text is shorter than the source text. It can occasionally also be bigger than one. Unfortunately, uh, this is possible. And in that sense, the compression was really an inflation. It was completely unsuccessful. Uh, but as you'll see, this sometimes happens too. There's different types of data compression. And if you, uh, if you Google for the term, you will find um, different things. So I, I want to be clear what we are talking about in this unit and what we are not talking about. First of all, you distinguish between logical compression and physical compression. Logical compression takes into account the specific domain where the data comes from. For example, it could only be applied to sound recordings. MP3 is a, a prime example of logical compression. If you would take the MP3 encoding algorithm and apply it to an English language text, it would probably produce some nonsense that is not even decodable and wouldn't look at all like a sensible encoding of that text. But if you apply it to uh, well, a digitalized piece of music, it does a, a very decent job. It produces something that sounds the same to the human ear, but is much smaller. And to do so, it applies techniques that are very specific to this data domain. That's why it's logical. Physical compression only takes the bits in the data without knowing what their meaning is. And that's the type of compression that we'll look at. We'll look at physical lossless compression. The second uh, distinction is, is lossless versus lossy. And often logical and lossy goes hand in hand. Uh, lossy means you can only decode the source text from C approximately. And that needs, that needs some notion of approximation. In the example I picked with MP3 and sound files, approximation roughly means it sounds the same to the human ear, whatever that really means. Uh, it's a, a vague concept, but you can make it more precise. Lossless compression, on the other hand, recovers bit by bit the same source text from the coded text. And this is again, this is the type of compression that we will be concerned with. So there's two main domains uh, that are to dis be distinguished. If you have media files, anything that's uh, audio, visual, videos, all these things are typically the domain of lossy logical compression because uh, 
already the data you start with is an approximation of some reality. The picture was taken uh, of, of some scene and there's no way to exactly represent the scene anyways. So it doesn't make sense to in insist on lossless compression. And uh, the benefit of this is to get a much better compression ratio. On the other hand, if you have natural language text uh, source code of some program, XML files you transmit through the web, you don't want to change the source code of a program and only get the approximately right code back. You want to have exactly the same text that you started with. So these are the compression algorithms that we will look at. And in a sense, they are universal that can be applied in any stage, but they will for, for any kind of data, but they will not usually be able to achieve the same compression ratio that uh, a domain specific logical compression would be. Now, if, if you restrict your attention to physical lock lossless uh, compression, there's the question how you could actually compress a text if you're not exploiting anything specific about it. And indeed, um, there's, there's two types of um, redundancies in the text that are frequently exploited by compression methods, and we'll look at, at both of them. Uh, one is that the character frequencies are not even not uh, not not uniformly distributed. The characters are uh, some characters occur much more often than others, and so by trying to encode the frequent characters with fewer bits, you can overall save space. The second type of uh, redundancy that you can exploit is if there's repetitions in the text. So the source text has different parts, but they're essentially identical, almost identical in some sense that we'll come to. So we'll look at both of these, but I also want to uh, issue a warning here. You can't always do this. There's no, su no such thing as a free lunch. Not everything is compressible in this lossless sense, in this with these uh, compression schemes you can apply to anything. Uh, so we will have to focus on methods that often work for typical type of data, but there will never be a guarantee that they always are able to compress things down. And you can indeed prove this. I uh, put in uh, a problem like this on the tutorial sheet for next week. So you will actually look at this, um, or is it this week already? Uh, for the tutorial for, for unit seven, whenever you're looking at this, um, will we'll prove mathematically that you cannot always compress things in this physical lossless sense. So in a, in a way, this is the best we can hope for. Specific types of redundancies that often occur in, in practical applications and that we can exploit.